Ikiningyo was also a place associated with the Lurid. Some displays show just how insular Japan was at this time, showing foreign places where apparently the locals might have hands longer than their legs and might move about on their hands. Other than the depiction of foreign lands, another influential bit of Ikiningyo work concerned erotic material. There's a kind of inner eroticism in Iki art. An Iki character would never actually meet your eyes, or at least not consciously, be it an art or theatre. That would be too much like that character knew and was enjoying an appreciation by an audience. This leads to a sense in Iki work that you are looking at something intense and personal about a character without that character knowing, or being in a position to stop you. This analytical gaze could be taken to gory and erotic extremes. There were Iki Ningyo depicting figures lying in pools of their own blood, for instance. A life-sized model of a pregnant woman had a belly that could open up to reveal the human fetus in 12 stages of development. The Eroguro Nan Zenzu movement began in 1930s Japan in a skittish Weimar Republic type interbellum. It was a bourgeois phenomenon devoted to exploring the deviant, bizarre and ridiculous. Things like news reports of a famous castration of a husband by his wife were like rallying calls to the group, and it grew in influence. It was initially just writers but spread into the other arts, including music. Later pink films of the 60s and hentai's deviant bent might be traced to this movement. In fact, tentacled rape or sex, which can be traced past Hokusai's famous erotic woodblock print, The Dream of the Fisherman's Wife, was revived as a part of Eroguro Nonsense, then was so popular it became its own thing. The biggest influences on Eroguro Nonsense were woodblock prints, but the gory Ikiningyo mentioned before probably contributed to this aesthetic. Woodblock prints by Yoshitoshi, who some consider the greatest Japanese artist of his age, included decapitations and acts of violence from Japanese history. Other ukiyo-e or woodblock print artists like Kuniyoshi also depicted rape and erotic crucifixion. You can see Iki in this in a sense. There is a brutality and idiomatic flow to a grotesque thing. It is its own thing and in its own world. When you look at it, you might be looking at the violence in a person freely expressed. Is Keroku the flower of Edo and Jiraiya the hero in Kabuki and the other types of Iki images were about an idiosyncratic purity in the face of the soul-sullying confusion of the ukiyo district. Eroguro's celebration of violence and grotesquerie for the sake of violence and grotesquerie was about an idiosyncratic purity in the face of middle-class safety and the violent intentions underlying propaganda. Karakuri As Japanese technology improved, Ikiningyo were themselves supplanted by a new art, Karakuri. Karakuri were clockwork automata which had been around since the 1600s, when European clocks were first figured out, but really became big in the 19th century. There are still the same three types of Karakuri, you had stage karakuri for theatre, big open air religious karakuri to be moved around on festival cars, and karakuri for household consumers, the zashiki karakuri. The most popular zashiki karakuri is the tea serving karakuri. Actually, karakuri is supposed to have influenced no kabuki and bunraku theatres. You can see the use of karakuri in anime in multiple ways. This is another area you could connect to the presence of the crazy anime expressions you see sometimes. Historically, karakuri makers first made giant religious karakuri of bodhisattvas or important parables because this was pretty much the only type of high-tech karakuri work they were allowed in the early years of the Sakoku or isolation. This deep association between robots and religious and ethical precepts like individuality has had a big influence on anime. The first international anime hit was Astro Boy in 1968 and featured a heroic robot but with a complex and moving backstory. One academic's favourite is Ghost in the Shell in 1995, and you can see similar themes in the fascination with robot servants and mecha for much of anime's history. There's an obvious other impact of the all-male theatre that would be good to point out. The Onnagata were not just transvestites, they were also very realistic, not just as women, but often admirable or formidable or otherwise icky women. Even a 50-year-old Onnagata could supposedly convince the male audience and receive patronage. There was also the appeal to women of the notion of the sensitive male under the makeup. For some time, women, and especially geisha, have literally studied how the onagata moves and behaves in order to learn ideal femininity. And whichever way the influence actually runs, there's no doubt that a true conservative elite woman or daughter in anime is often like a more casual and authoritative version of onagata kata and speech timing and grace of movement. In the 1930s, another single sex theater sprung up, the Tarazuka Review. This all-woman venue incorporated many Western influences and staged blockbuster musicals with women also playing the male leads in the Otokuyaku role. 
there was a master understudy system and like kabuki there was a long period of training and development in auto theater the style though involves slim fitting pants and high heels to lengthen the legs and an overall westernized elegant personality they often had big female followings the early bishona in anime and also the manga that generated them were really just male otokyaku the bishonen continues to be an important archetype tending to match wagoto and otokyaku traits sometimes you might have an effeminate almost onagata type of male character especially in yaoi art the japanese realist tradition in art which spans many centuries is a very important influence on manga and anime The Amakimono emerged in 1185. This began as an adaptation of Chinese picture scrolls but quickly became a separate art form. The Amakimono is basically a long scroll with pictures and accompanying text like dialogue or description. There's a manga-like technique called Ichidozo ho with a single backdrop and with the characters appearing repeatedly in different frames representing different times and the story is read and moves in time from right to left as in manga today. The stories are often historical but with a real tragic comic interest in normal people's vices from the form's Buddhist origins. The characters were drawn in a cartoonish shorthand but with basically realistic expressions outlined in half in lines. In fact, when the first anime were made, they were called Senga or line drawing anime in reference to this style. And shoutouts to Senga are not unknown in later anime. When there are fights, you can see the panic and bravery and confusion. There's some cinematic deployment as in this heavenly messenger arriving essentially on a jet contrail and you can sense the acceleration of anime characters like Doraemon and it a bit. There was a real focus on really giving emotions to all the characters. In one later scene from the scroll of the tale of Genji, the romantic tension between two lovers is communicated by the nervousness of an ox. This realism in the attention to people's feelings, emotional atmosphere and the actual expressions of individuals is the beginning of a long artistic tradition in Japan. Whereas Amakimono was about attention to the resolve of leaders and the emotions of common folk, Zen portraiture when it appeared in the Muromachi period in 1337 was about deep attention to the minutest aspect of Zen masters. Zen practice was grounded in the idea of intuitive learning through long guidance. The idea of Zen portraiture, at least as most of its buyers conceived it, was that by studying your Zen master's image, you could grow towards enlightenment even if you couldn't actually be in your master's presence. This meant the images had to be as absolutely true to life as possible, capturing every proportion and detail about them and their chambers. There was a tendency towards sober monotones to fit the mood, but the techniques of attention to visual detail and proportion here were groundbreaking. This is a wooden portrait sculpture from the end of the Muromachi period in 1500 and it is so lifelike and you can imagine a kind of raw humor in an immortality of slow rotting. Here is Naruto preparing to do great good. This portrait of the Zen priest Ikkyu has been connected with the character Hana which might be translated as flower from Satoshi Kon's Tokyo Godfathers. Though I guess the continuing influence of a style this sincere and profound isn't exactly surprising. The most familiar type of Japanese interior decor was also established in the Muromachi period. Between 1337 and 1573, a wide number of interior decor trends emerged. Zen study rooms, sliding doors, and other things like wall panels you could bring together to create enclosed spaces and changing floor plans in your home were established in this period. Art-wise, two formats for paintings emerged with this flexible room structure. One was the shohakiga or paintings for the wall panels that could be arranged any which way to create rooms. The other was for the biobu, which is the more familiar painted folding screen. The subjects are a continuation of the emakimono material. You have real life scenes like street parades, festival crowds, and people at work. This subject matter would continue down the centuries with the mass-produced scrolls called kirokuga, and then the colorfully named namban biobu or southern barbarian folding screens. These were where a real explosion in color began after the Muromachi period. In the Azuka Momoyama period, 1573 to 1603, often literally gold backgrounds, brilliant flowers, pine trees, birds and prancing lions were introduced to Shoikiga and especially Biobu or folding screens. The gold dusting was probably easier to maintain in this format. One thing you can see in this painting is a kind of textile aesthetic of patterning that continues into Kabuki's colorful costumes and has really reappeared in many anime after 2000s. 
including Bakemonogatri. And most visibly, Gankutsuo, the Count of Monte Cristo. Maybe as a kind of visual sampling as in music. With the end of the Azuka Momoyama period began a period where urban culture really came into its own. This was when the Edo and the Osaka or Kamigata regions really established themselves as major metropolises. Art-wise, picture books were mass-produced through woodblock printing for the city folk. This was a time when the new Confucian shogunate banned prostitution in the cities, which only pushed prostitution out of the city and gave rise to the three red light district capitals of the Ogyo, or floating world. Yoshiwara for Edo, Shimabara for Kyoto, and Shinmachi for Osaka. On top of kabuki and fashion, a key part of the culture of the ukiyo is the ukiyo -e, or pictures of the floating world, which were mass produced in posters, handbills, and paperback books for the merchants and other members of the new middle class. Here is an interesting collaboration of three famous artists. The Austrian Neo Confucianist shogunate's Confucian values got the woodblock treatment in this print for a board game called The Five Constant Virtues of Confucianism. The subject matter of the ukiyo-e woodblock print was often considered iki. Kabuki actors and courtesans got the Zen master treatment, now in full colour. As I mentioned with the iki ningyo, iki never involved the person facing directly out of the painting as in the Mona Lisa. The iki work was always true to the notion of a person as being as direct in manner as he was in character. Iki tended to reflect the iki notion of idiosyncrasy by always having the iki character essentially be in a different world. In Kabuki, you often talked about place in terms of the hero Sekai or Minir, and clearly implying that that world was different. In Ukiyo-e paperbacks, Iki beings regarded each other across the pages of the manuscript, each sublime in a private or interactive Iki Sekai. The Ukiyo-e equivalent of the Mona Lisa's mysterious smile is the Mikai Shibijin, looking over her shoulder. Later on, travel books and landscape paintings about other places entered the Ukiyo-e repertoire and some world-famous Hokusai and Hiroshige landscape paintings with extremely realistic colour grading feature among these. The technique featured the line drawing of Emma Kimono but with a stronger, longer line. The line was icky in the sense that this longer line was both stronger and more graceful. The sleek analytical line has even led to a comparison of this piece, called A Woman Bathing, to the painstaking manufacture of Major Motoko Kusanagi's very beautiful body at the start of Ghost in the Shell. Thus, the ukiyo-e's major contributions were the introduction of the long, graceful line in Japanese art and skillful color use to the Japanese realist tradition.